Good morning, everybody. I'm Uriel Bowser, your mayor. I am here today on U Street in Ward 1, and we are providing a public safety update as the 4th of July weekend approaches. Uh, we, of course, are celebrating the 4th of July, and it's a federal holiday, obviously, this Monday. Uh, so we expect people to be out enjoying themselves throughout the weekend. So we have a lot going on in the city, uh, and we want for D.C. residents and all eight wards to have fun, uh, enjoy your family and friends, uh, but also be safe. Uh, so we are here to talk about some of uh, those preparations for the weekend. I'm joined by members of our public safety team to include Director Linda Harley Harper, uh, Chief Conti, and uh, Mitchell Canry, who is our fire marshal. And I also want to acknowledge uh, the presence of the Ward 2 Council member, um, Brooke Pinto. Uh, so let me just say a couple of things about this summer. First of all, 12,000 children, D.C. residents, are in summer camp right now uh, with the Department of Parks and Recreation. So let's give our DPR staff a big round of applause uh, for getting ready for our little ones. We have 14,000 young people through the age of 24 at 700 summer youth sites throughout the district. So let's give DOES a big round of applause. 6,000 students are at summer school uh, that DCPS is hosting. Uh, and many of those students have the opportunity to earn and learn. So go to summer school and participate in a summer youth um, program. If you haven't seen DPR's extended pool and rec hours in, uh, that are happening every Friday, um, please check out those listings on DPR's website. Uh, we are also opening on the 4th of July an additional six pools that are normally closed on Mondays. So these uh, activities are posted on our new website, summer.dc.gov summer.dc.gov. Um, so we know when families and the government work together, uh, we can ensure that we all have a safe summer. I am particularly calling on parents and grandparents to keep a close eye on your young people, uh, all the young people in your family. And we're not just talking about the little ones. Make sure you know where your teenagers are and where your young adults are this weekend. Make sure you know who they are with and what they are up to. Uh, we want to have a weekend of fun and not tragedy, and we know uh, when all of us reaches out and makes sure that our young people are engaged uh, and that they are safe, we will have a safe city. Uh, so many of us um, stood together uh, a few weeks ago with Davon McNeil's mom. Uh, and you will remember that this was a sweet child uh, who was taken from us senselessly on July 4th, two years ago. So we know uh, that the presence of guns in communities, people carrying guns and people using guns to resolve conflict uh, is what led to Davon's death. I also want uh, to acknowledge that there are a lot of D.C. government employees, some of whom are behind me, others that you will see out in the community, uh, who are helping uh, to make sure we have a safe July 4th. And our public safety GO teams will be engaging uh, residents in areas where we expect larger gatherings to happen. The goal teams are made up of non-law enforcement partners like our credible messengers and violence interrupters. We are also deploying a new multi-agency nightlife task force 
also led by the Office of the Deputy Mayor for Public Safety and Justice. And we will have these teams out in our busy nightlife corridors. The task force will work with residents and businesses to implement targeted strategies in nightlife corridors with a particular emphasis on reducing crime, addressing illegal ATB use, and enforcing traffic uh, and parking regulations. The goal for this, of course, is for people to enjoy our beautiful city uh, and to do it safely. So uh, there are also uh, some housekeeping items to remind everyone of. Uh, we will be, the city, of course, is the backdrop for the national fireworks. So be aware of street closures. We're going to have hot weather this weekend, so stay hydrated uh, and be mindful of firework safety. And there is no reason to be carrying guns uh, to any events that you're going to. We want people to have a good weekend, to stay faith safe, uh, and most uh, importantly, to stay out of trouble. Uh, and so I want to bring up uh, Linda Harley Harper, who will speak a little bit more about gun violence prevention, followed by Chief Conti. And then we're going to hear from our fire marshal, uh, Director Harley Harper. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Morning. As the mayor said, we want to make sure that we keep everyone safe over this weekend, and we have a long weekend. The Office of Gun Violence Prevention is working very closely in partnership with the Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement to support our communities and to help keep them safe. As you may have seen around the city, we have launched a 202 for Peace campaign, which is a citywide campaign that involves multi-agency coordination and collaboration among community stakeholders. <clears throat> Devon McNeil, that the mayor mentioned, is one of the young people that are highlighted in the campaign. You will see wall art, bike share graphics, WMATA signage, and a strong social media and a strong social media presence. For more information and about how you can get involved, please go to 202 for Peace. That's spelled out, F-O-R, 202forpeace.dc.gov. And it'll offer tips on how you can get involved in the citywide campaign. I also want to give some more details about the GO teams that the mayor mentioned. We have almost a dozen uh, GO teams that will promote safety in community areas and that are expecting large gatherings and large fireworks. Residents can expect to see us set up tents with district agency resources. There will be non-law enforcement, all hands on deck, staff uh, working in the areas um, that the GO teams are assigned, and they will share, be sharing information such as meal sites for students, firework safety, and be offering DPR camp at-home camp bags and masks. Teams will be out in the communities from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. walking in the community and engaging residents. We'll also have a full deployment, all hands on deck for our violence interrupters to support the community. And we are connecting with our people of promise that we've talked to you about before. We're connecting with all of them, engaging them and encouraging them to have a safe 4th of July. Our Building Blocks DC grantees are offering events throughout the uh, July 4th weekend. And they are uh, offering events that are keeping communities and people engaged. I want to give a moment uh, just to shout out Training Grounds and the Alliance for Concerned Men and Father Factor, who are um, three of the organizations, community-based organizations, that have been intentional with their decision-making around offering community events. Our violence interrupters all work for community organizations, and so some of them are taking uh, young people out of town, out of D.C., and then those who are remaining local will be working with the GO teams. We have a lot happening this weekend, a lot of fun activities, and we want to make sure that everyone is safe. We want to have a safe summer. We know that the free, uh, we know that having engaged young people is going to make us have a, a, good, a good and safe summer. The free summer meals program for young people is now available and will provide two meals per day at 106 sites throughout the city. 
And if you need to find a location, you can visit dpr.dc.gov to find out where the sites are for free meals for young people. We also have launched a new website called summer.dc.gov, which provides a comprehensive list of all the activities that are available for teens and for tweens. It's a one-stop shop for summer fun for district residents. Teens and parents can text to receive activities directly to their phones that can engage young people. We can do this, D.C. Let's enjoy and look out for each other. Uh, in wrapping up, I want to say today is Social Media Day, and this is one way that I can encourage everyone here and everyone listening to use your platforms on social media throughout the weekend to spread messages of peace, love, healing, and forgiveness in the District of Columbia. We know that a lot of conflicts and gun violence is magnified through social media, and let's all work together to flood social media with positive messages. Thank you. Chief Conti. Well, good morning. We have a lot uh, to cover. I'm Robert J. Conti III, Chief of Police uh, here at the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C. As all of you know, Washington, D.C. is a city where events take place year-round and attracts millions of visitors. This July 4th weekend, I'm looking forward to seeing many of those visitors enjoying what our city has to offer. But as in the past, I want to stress again that anyone coming to our city this weekend or any other weekend must recognize that our communities demand peace and civility. Unsafe and illegal behaviors will not be tolerated. We need everyone, everywhere, to do what they can to help keep our city safe. Public safety is not a spectator sport, and we all have a role to play. Of course, the police department has a primary role in this, but other agencies also have a responsibility when it comes to the safety of our residents. That's why you see around me members of numerous district government agencies, many of whom are represented here today. We continue to collaborate and coordinate on a wide range of safety issues and understanding that each of our agencies has a unique perspective on how to address these issues. As Mayor Bowser mentioned, this work has led to the creation of the new pilot nightlife task force. The nightlife task force has been formed to implement a coordinated public safety response in our nightlife corridors with a goal of decreasing violent crime and nonviolent crime through Labor Day, after which we will assess its effectiveness and impact and impact on crime and disorder. When we look at areas where violence occurs in our city, we see patterns Patterns that include double and triple parking of vehicles on the street, traffic congestion, illegal ATV operations, individuals drinking in public or public drug use, and of course, unruly gatherings, just to name a few. To start interrupting these patterns, the task force's initial focus will be in areas with a significant number of nightlife venues, namely the H Street Corridor, Connecticut Avenue corridor, and right here on the U Street corridor. Every weekend this summer, you'll see the whole of government in these areas. They'll be inside of establishments at times to ensure that patrons are safe and enjoying themselves, and at the same time adhering to appropriate standards of behavior. This means not overdoing it with alcohol getting into fights and engaging in other nuisance behavior that sometimes escalates to violence. Our establishments should abide by patron capacity limits, avoid overserving, and be prepared to engage our task force members. Outside these venues, you'll see more traffic enforcement and a visible presence from our partners. The goal is to positively impact the safety of community members and visitors to our city through these efforts. As I speak about these efforts, I am reminded of the violence that led to a 15-year-old boy being shot and killed almost two weeks ago. Chase Poole was senselessly murdered only a few blocks from here. Our detectives continue to make progress on this case, and today 
we have images of a person of interest in his murder. Please take a close look at this image. It will be put on all of our social media platforms. This is an opportunity for the public to help identify this individual. Chase Poole's family needs our city right now. And I'm asking because your city needs the public right now. The young man in this photo, you may have run from U Street, but you cannot run from accountability and you cannot hide from the citizens of the District of Columbia. So I'm asking anyone who recognizes this young man to please reach out to us at 202-727-9099 or call us or text us at 50411. We'll be offering a cash reward for individuals who help us lead, who leads us to the identity of this person. Again, on our social media platforms, you will find this image along with the video of this person. Make note of the distinct hoodie that he's wearing and the imagery on the hoodie. With the convergence of multiple government entities, including ABRA, DCRA, DDOT, DC Films, DPW, and others, we anticipate prog progress in our nightlife areas. Let me briefly return to the weekend ahead and how we're preparing to ensure it's a safe and enjoyable July 4th holiday. Along with the Nightlife Task Force, as you heard, the city's GO teams will be working all weekend. MPD has increased staffing levels to ensure events in and around the National Mall are properly secured without sacrificing the quality of service we provide to our neighborhoods and residents. Whether you are participating in one of several community parades, attending the Nationals baseball game, or coming into town for the spectacular fireworks display, we want everyone to be safe. In coordination with our federal partners, we have been sharing information and monitoring all potential threats to ensure this year's holiday goes as planned. There has been no indication of any specific attacks targeting our city, but with that, it is important that everyone keep a watchful eye and report anything that seems suspicious. You know the adage, if you see something, say something. I encourage you all to sign up for safety alerts in addition to MPDs, but also U.S. Park Police by texting July 4, D.C. to 888-777. Again, texting to July 4, D.C. to 888-777. There are a number of road closures around the National Mall and Tidal Basin that all residents and visitors should be aware of this, on this day. And if you're planning on driving, please understand that many streets around the National Mall will be closed to traffic. Pack your patience. Specific road closures are available on MPD's website and social media channels as well. Additionally, MPD has advised the public about watercraft restrictions on the Potomac River that will go into effect on July 4th. As always, if you plan to watch the fireworks from your boat on the Potomac River, you must adhere to the designated anchorage zones. Consistent with past holiday celebrations, this year there will be two community parades planned on the 4th in the Barracks Row and Palisades neighborhoods. If you are planning to attend, Please remember the heat. As the mayor mentioned, it will be hot. Come prepared and review where you can enter and exit to best access the parade routes. While we encourage everyone to enjoy the holiday, partake in celebrations, and have fun, we would like to remind everyone to use safety precautions, common sense, and good judgment. Call MPD at 202-727-9099 or text us at 50411 to provide anonymous information. As always, call 911 in the event of an emergency. Lastly, I want to thank the MPD officers that work each holiday, our DC Fire EMS crew members, and the rest of the District of Columbia government workers who will be working to ensure that we have a safe city on, 4th of, on the 4th of July. 
I also want to acknowledge our police cadets. They're in the back over there. So as we talk about opportunities and things that young people are engaged in in our city, there's never a better time to join your nation's capital police department for the young people in our community between the ages of 17 and 24 to join our police cadet program. Again, please go to our social media channels and to our website to learn more about the police cadet program. Thank you and be safe. Enjoy the July 4th holiday. And I'll turn it over to I'll now turn it over to the fire marshal to talk about additional safety measures for the 4th of July holiday. Hello, I'm Mitch McHenry, Fire Marshal for the District of Columbia. Our inspectors and investigators play a vital role in the Nightlife Task Force and the 4th of July as this is truly a district-wide effort to keep our residents and our visitors safe. On that note, we need your help. Last year, the men and women of DC Fire and EMS helped 17 people, adults and children, who were injured by setting off or handling fireworks. We saw accidental fires set off by fireworks that included vehicle fires and brush fires. We talk about the dangers, but as you can see, these dangers became a reality too many times for too many of our residents. We want to eliminate these incidents from happening in the first place. In the district, any firework that moves, flies, or explodes is illegal. Now for the legal consumer fireworks. Those can be bought, only bought, from the fireworks stands that you see located throughout the district. <clears throat> Do not buy fireworks from anyone else. Remember, just because they are legal does not mean they can't hurt you. When using legal fireworks, place them on a firm surface away from structures, combustibles, and people. Please stand back after they have been ignited. Do not allow children to handle any fireworks. Even though sparklers are legal in DC, they burn at 1200 degrees. For reference, glass melts at 900 degrees. So you can imagine what 1200 degrees can do to somebody's skin. One important tip is to keep a bucket of water nearby and never touch or pick up a firework that looks like it might be a dud. We are not only worried about fireworks. Just last week, our crews responded to a significant apartment fire that started because of a grill on the balcony. All grills need to be placed well away from homes, decks, railings, and from under anything that is hanging over like eaves or branches. Never leave your grill unattended, and please, no grilling on balconies. When lighting a propane grill, always leave the lid open to prevent a buildup of flammable gas that could ignite or explode. When grilling with charcoals, when you are done, charcoal should be allowed to cool and then thrown away in a metal container with a lid. That container needs to stay outside and away from your home, garage, or any other combustibles. When the thermometer rises, so do the calls to 911. Last Friday, DC Fire and EMS saw its busiest day of the year with 730 calls for service in just one day. That particular day, all of us felt the sweltering record temperatures of 99 degrees. We love seeing you, but our summer motto is, let's not meet because of the heat. We are also asking you to do whatever you can to keep yourself cool and out of the emergency room. Hydrate, wear cool clothing, and limit your exposure outside. A happy fourth means a safe fourth. Most of these tips are common sense, so please don't let the moment get away from you. Think safe, be safe, and please visit summer.dc.gov. Have a wonderful Fourth of July. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, summer.dc.gov. Summer.dc.gov. Um, we'll explain all of the events happening that are supported by D.C. government agencies. Uh, the tips that you heard will also uh, be recounted there. And uh, we will make sure you know where to go for, for street closures. So I'm happy to take a couple questions. Any questions? Yes, Mark. Uh, for Chief Conti, Chief, you mentioned ATVs. Can you tell us exactly what your strategy will be uh, if ATVs, especially we see it in, th in this corridor here a lot, we've seen them down on the National Mall recently. Uh, what is the strategy for the ATVs? So I won't get into the specifics of the strategy, Mark, uh, but I'll say this. Uh, over the last uh, 12 days, we recovered over 22 illegal ATVs from communities. Uh, while we will not be able to get all of them, uh, the strategy that we deploy, we want to safely recover ATVs without jeopardi further jeopardizing uh, public safety. Uh, you know, quite frankly, when I see some of these ATVs going up and down the street, uh, you know, it, it, and as, as we have had conversations with folk around this, you got people who just want to be seen. And I think that that's just unacceptable. When you have, uh, you know, little boys and grown men bodies just zooming around the streets of the District of Columbia, making our communities unsafe because they want to be seen, there are other ways to be seen. And that's not one that we certainly that we support. So we're going to safely get those bikes off the street, Mark. Uh, but we won't talk too much about the particular strategy. Yes. 
Hi, Gigi. Can you give us some background on James Poole? The suspect is this a new person. Also, um, uh, his family right now. How are they doing? What are they saying? Yeah, thank you for that. So, you know, Chase Poole, uh, obviously, uh, a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, uh, tra tragically lost his life. When you talk about the suspect, this is just really good uh, detective work uh, to where we are right now, the person of interest. Um, going through tons and tons of video. Uh, there's a lot of video. If you look right there at 14th and U, there's a police camera right there. There are multiple businesses right there. We talked about a ton of police officers being on the scene. There's body-worn camera footage there. So really kind of uh, going through, the detectives going through that video were able to help us get to this point uh, where we are able to produ produce this image for the public. Uh, the family, obviously the family is, is, is going through. They're dealing with having lost their 15-year-old son senselessly to an act of violence. And that young man should be alive today, being able to enjoy the fourth like everybody else on Monday. Yes. Uh, Metro has said there might be crowds and long waits this weekend. Is there anything the city's doing to make it easier for people to get downtown? Well, we, you, we're making sure everybody knows. I still believe, I know for a fact, that Metro is still your best option. Uh, given that there are going to be a lot of street closures, um, and if you tried to park, you would probably be walking long distances. So it is now is the time to kind of plan your day and make sure you can be um, patient as you leave. But my, what my experience with seeing people evacuate from the 4th of, not evacuate, but leave from the 4th of July, is it happens really fast. Uh, you might be surprised. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, two questions. Uh, you, you all, uh, Chief Conti and Mayor Bowser, both indicated you wanted to crack down on some of these unpermitted uh, gatherings. You sort of alluded to the fact that you were expecting there to be a lot of them uh, this weekend. Have you, have you made any progress or, or have you been in touch with some organizers of events that you know are happening that haven't reached out to you? And uh, what can you all do and what role are you trying to play to make those events as safe as possible. Well, all of the officials here, um, as you may know, they we monitor uh, all of the channels that are out there in uh, anticipation of gatherings uh, happening. And uh, it's the job of the teams from MPD, Violence Interruption, GO teams, uh, to make sure that we have a clear understanding of what's happening and get as um, if there is a bona fide gathering, try to make it one that is a, a legal gathering. Uh, and if it's not, encourage, you know, people to disperse. Who is next? Yep, Sam. So, Mayor, uh, what can you tell us about this 295 thing where apparently uh, cars were full of tar, et cetera, after going through a, a scene? Um, my initial feedback, Sam, is that there was a misapplied material, um, but I have to dig into that a little bit more before I can say exactly what happened. And, Mayor, just looking at the situation with respect to the fourth and the teams, so you, you thought obviously there should be extra effort this weekend. No, that. actually, we've deployed GO teams. I think this may be the third year um, that we have had uh, teams of people that are quick response, that are before the fourth, looking at social media, working with community organizations, making sure that our violence interrupters are available for, for quick response. What departments are they? You said from all over the government, or they are, um, but but mostly focus on our um, from our violence intervention work. It's just a, a a concentrated effort during this July Fourth weekend. Yes. Uh, Chief Conte, two quick questions. Sure. Number one. Okay. You have these three areas under this nightlife pilot, Connecticut Avenue, H Street, U Street. Uh, just wanted the residents to be assured that even though there will be a lot of police presence around those areas, other areas of the city will be covered. Also, my second question is, for lack of a better term, all hands on deck. Is this an all hands on deck thing this weekend? So, uh to answer your question, James, yeah, I can assure yes, I can assure the residents of the District of Columbia uh, that we're not having to to take a bunch of resources from communities in order to pull this off. 
uh, we're actually just tr really, quite frankly, reimagining resources. Uh, we all know what the state is in terms of the number of police officers we have in the city, which is why, uh, as a whole government, we approach this issue, a nightlife issue. If we have tow cranes that are out here from DPW towing vehicles, and we have fire marshals that are out here enforcing overcrowding, and we have folks from Abra that are out here, those are force multipliers uh, for our law enforcement agency. We're also engaging, really, community members. We have community members that are active police reserves who come for, to the police department and go out on the street with a gun and badge, and they do it, and it does not cost us a thing for them to do that. So we're activating them as well. There may be some officers who are working overtime. I'm not going to say that we're not going to have officers who are working overtime to do this. But again, it is a whole of government approach and an effort to really maximize the visibility, maximize the resources of the entire government, and not just land it on the shoulders for uh, the entire me for the Metropolitan Police Department to achieve this. So when you engage the entire government, you don't have to resort to uh, uh, all hands on deck every weekend. Uh, type effort in order in order to achieve this. That's not sustainable over the long term. Uh, officers get burned out in that process. In addition to officers getting burned out, you have officers in situations where we're dealing with people who have, been, in, in some instances, in, um, are consumed a lot of alcohol. Sometimes bad de de decisions come in place there. So I want to make sure that we have a good balance there. So engaging all of our partners really uh, is the effort to maximize visibility in all of these uh, communities. So for this weekend, we have an up uh, staffing of our entire agency. That really is not anything new uh, for the 4th of July uh, holiday where we engage everyone to manage what's happening downtown, to manage the parades that are going on, to manage First Amendment stuff that's going on, to manage what's happening in the various corridors. Again, uh, the importance of the GO teams, non-law enforcement entities that have the capacity to go out and touch communities and help community members to kind of work through some of these issues. It doesn't really take full police officer to come and say, hey, look, this large gathering is not a good idea. But if we have other respected, cr uh, trusted, credible uh, community members who can go out and have those conversations, perhaps there's an opportunity to intervene uh, in that in that way. So those are all of the things, James, that we're really doing to really to achieve a safe summer and a, and a very, very safe 4th of July. Good, uh, good morning, Mayor. Happy 4th of July weekend. Thank you. I have a two part question. Why have you been unwilling to include an anti-commander's clause in potential RFK stadium legislation to this point? And if the standoff with members of DC Council continues, are we in a danger zone where the city could lose the opportunity to get back that land with a democratically controlled Congress? Um, what I'm unwilling to do is include the Mendelssohn Rider um, that says to the Congress, you decide what's good for the District of Columbia. I'm the mayor of D.C., the council is the elected legislature for D.C., and we should decide what's good for us. So what I am unwilling to do is say to the Congress, after years of fighting for statehood, after years of strengthening home rule, after years of fighting against riders that restrict our ability to do everything for pay for, to pay for women's health care, uh, to make sure that we can regulate uh, marijuana sales in our city, I'm unwilling to say that we need a rider for this. Then are we in danger if Mendelssohn does not compromise and you hold your ground that we do, in fact, miss this opportunity to have the legislation even introduced? You know, I d I've been working on getting control of the land for seven years, uh, and I've been working on it uh, absent this, this current demand of, of this rider. Uh, and it's a complicated thing, no matter what. There are no guarantees that if we capitulate to this rider, that tells the Congress to control us, we still may not have it, have it done in the next four months. So what we have to stay focused on is our values, uh, and our values are that we control our own destiny in the district, uh, and that we're not gonna tell the Congress to do it for us. Yes. Uh, Mayor Bowser, what is the current status of negotiations with the teachers union? Uh, it's been three years and uh, with the deaths of young people, teachers are often on the front lines consoling their peers and taking in the trauma. Uh, we're at the table with the teachers union, and I'm very proud of what we put on the table. 
what is on the table? Well, you know, I can't talk about negotiations. Those are unfair labor practices. At what point can we expect a resolution or a new contract? This is two parties at the table. So I can tell you I'm very, very proud. I was hoping that before teachers went on break that we would have a contract. I think you know that the last contract was negotiated by my administration. Uh, and we are proud as a city that we have the best paid, best trained teachers in this region. And I can assure you uh, what we have on the table is uh, I'm proud of. Yes. A question for clarification, Mayor Bowser. Hello. Um, given that this 4th of July weekend is going to be normal, much more normal than the past two years, how many people are you guys expecting to actually come and descend on the, uh, on the National Mall? Uh, we, don't, we don't make crowd estimates. No estimates at all? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mayor Bowser, if I could follow up on the 295 question. I see you have somebody here from DDOT. Can you give us, or maybe DDOT has more information about exactly how this happened, and more importantly, for the cars that were damaged, you know, where do they go? I mean, who's responsible? They go to the Department of um, Risk um, Risk Management. The Department of Risk Management. It's a D.C. government agency that basically handles claims um, if the district is liable for damage. So they go to the Department of Risk Management. Are you saying that the district is liable for the damage to these cars? And I'm saying preliminarily it looks that way. Do you have any idea how many cars were damaged? During I don't, but I'm happy to have um, DDOT follow up with you, Mark, on um, when we have a kind of clear assessment of where we are. And anyone who has damage, just by dialing 311, they can be connected to the Office of Risk Management. Last question. Just to follow up here, do you know how many claims have been filed from damaged cars, and um, is there anything that the city's doing to make sure that won't happen again? Again, it's too, it's really too early for us to talk, and so I'm, I'm happy to do it, but I want to do it with complete information, and so let us follow up with you. Okay. Thank you, everybody.